sorry everyone for this delay we so sorry uh, for this delay thank you again for joining us on this Tuesday welcome all of you once again we did have a technical issue it has been resolved but thank you for your patience and welcome very quickly um, I just want to sort of catch up um, the prayer call starts at 7:30 tonight the prayer call is 667 seven seven zero one two nine five six six seven 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 zero one two nine five and the passcode is five four seven zero three nine the information is on our website rcgministries.org and while you're there you can certainly drop us a prayer request or if you request notes and outlines we make those available to you as well Father God, thank you for our lesson tonight. Be with us, we pray. Teach us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Um, thank you for joining us once again. We apologize for being a little late getting started. We had a technical issue on the page, but we are back. I uh, want to talk tonight uh, about a passage from 1 Timothy uh, chapter 3. And it talks about our behavior in church our behavior in church um uh, when we look at this passage this is one to encourage all of us now first timothy chapter three this is what paul says to timothy but if i tarry long in other words paul is away he's telling timothy if i stay away too long that thou may know how thou should behave thyself. Talking about the church. He's saying, I'm away, but I'm writing you, telling you how the church should behave while I am away. So this is talking about behavior. This is talking about behavior. So this passage tonight is really one of encouragement, but it's one that we can reflect. We need to reflect and get refreshed on our behavior in worship. Not necessarily for our church, but how all churches should behave because this is biblical so the apostle paul was interested in people knowing how to behave in the house of god that's what first timothy chapter 3 verse 15 says it's important that we know how to behave in the house of god so there is a perception that thou may know that thou might know some people just don't don't know then there is what we call the propriety how we ought to behave it's it's a priority of how we should behave the quality our state of mind and is talking about the place, the house of God, which is the church. And then there is the priority, the church of the living God, the pillow and ground of truth. So he lays all this out and he says there's a perception, there's a priority, there's a place, and of course there again is the priority. So, what is he talking about here? When we come to church, this is so important. We need to be thankful. Psalm 104 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So our conduct when we come to the house of God 
Even our temple is a body of Christ. Our temple, we are the church. When we enter into our own prayer, when we enter into the sanctuary, we ought to be thankful. We ought to be thankful to God. We should. We ought to be thank him for our salvation. We ought to thank him for the church. Thank him for your Bible. There's many countries where Bibles are, uh, can't be obtained and they're legal, illegal. We got to be thankful for the church family. We have to be thankful for the opportunity to give. Thanking God for the singing. Thanking God for the preaching. So when we come to church, when we come to worship, our conduct and our attitude ought to be toward giving God thanks. Because Psalm 100 says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. So when we come in, we're going to say, thank you, Lord, for allowing me one more time to gather in your sanctuary, to be with the saints. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for our music. Thank you for our officers. Thank you for the pastor. Thank you for the leadership. We ought to enter into our sanctuary with the spirit of thanksgiving. That's important because many times we come into the church and thanksgiving is nowhere on our mind. In that regard, our conduct doesn't really relate to how we should act according to Psalm 104. We ought to come in saying, thank you, Jesus. Of course, you might not come in vocally and loudly, but we can say to ourselves, thank you, Lord. Thank you for worship. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for a place. Thank you for kneeling space. Thank you for heat in the building. Thank you for air conditioning in the building. Thank you for a place to park. Thank you for letting us come in this place. You brought us through the whole week long, and we just want to assemble ourselves together and give God thanks. Can you imagine how the service would be if everybody came in with a thankful heart, saying, thanking God for healing, thanking Him for safety, thanking Him for bringing us together? Can you imagine the explosion when we all come in with an attitude of thanks? Our conduct in church starts with being thankful. And then also, we have to be unified. And that passage is found in Acts 2.46. So the first one, be thankful, is in Psalm 104, our conduct. But then the second one is to be unified, Acts 2.46. We say unified, we should come on one accord. Look what Acts 2.46 says. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple. So when we come, we ought to be unified in worship, unified in praise, unified in our thanksgiving. Because when we come first being thankful and we all are together in unity, thanking God, God begins to move in an awesome way. So think about this. When we come into the house, are we thankful? Are we come unified in spirit? Are we coming saying, thank you, Lord, for allowing me? We should. Years ago, they used to have prayer warriors or persons that would pray before service that as persons come in, we'll be unified in spirit, that we'd have a thankful heart, that we would be um, delivered from the outside forces that steal our worship moment and depress us. So we come in, we have to have a unified spirit in Christ. So when we come together in unity, but we've got to understand that everybody that comes 
is unified because there are persons in the church where strife and discord is. Wow. Even though we want to be unified, but let's be clear, let's be real. Not everybody comes in with a thankful heart. Not everybody comes in unified. There are sometimes in churches around the world, our church and other churches, where persons come in with the attitude to destroy or to sow discord. So in Proverbs 619, it talks about the seven things that the Lord hates. And the one that he hates the most is Proverbs 619. It says, he that soweth discord among the brethren. That right there is very important. And many times persons come in with the attitude, I'm going to make it happen my way. They're going to worship my way. They're going to see it my way. Or we come in with the gossip. We come in with an attitude of kind of see, not with the attitude of praise of thanksgiving, just to see who you can bother, just to see who you can talk about, just to see who's willing to listen to your gossip. And one of the things that the Lord hates is he that soweth discord. We have to be careful with discord because many times we could sow discord unaware. Now, what I mean by that, we may say something in a no harm way, but when somebody listens to it, they don't interpret it the way you said it to them. So they could receive it as a moment of discord. And it only takes one to serve or start a rumor of discord. And one thing that will destroy a fellowship is somebody that, or a body of people that sows discord, always having a rumor, always trying to find out what's wrong with somebody, never having anything good to say, always having something negative to say, always bringing down somebody. You see, that's sowing discord. And when you sow discord, in Proverbs, a list of things that the Lord hates, but the one he hates is he that soweth discord among the brethren. We have to be careful because we can't have good worship if there's a discord being sown in the body. Philippians 2, 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife and vain glory, but in lowliness of mind that each person esteem another better than themselves. That's Philippians 2, 3. So when we come to worship, we should not come looking and trying to see who's who, what's what, who's wearing what, who's dating this, who's going to sing, finding fault in this, finding fault in that. That is not a good conduct. Or you do something that you know everybody would not like, but you're going to do it anyway. That's sowing discord. So we're going to have our conduct to be where it's going to be effective and how we can act. We have to be thankful. We have to be unified. And I'll be honest and I'll brag on RCG for a moment. I'll brag. I'm thankful, and I've said it before. I'm thankful that we have unity among the, year, uh, among the leadership and unity in the body. Now, that doesn't mean that the different personalities of everyone doesn't at times, you know, exhibit themselves. But we're all our individuals and our personality is as they are. But in the end of the day, there's no fighting. 
we discuss like we're supposed to. We use the gifts of everyone that we're supposed to. But in the end of the day, at the end of it, we are at least on one accord. And the one accord that we on is to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. As long as we are on one accord with the message of the gospel, that's what good conduct is. Sometimes the conduct can be so bad that we miss the mission, we miss the focus, and then it becomes about us. But when we come on one accord with the purpose of God, then we're exercising good conduct. A third thing for having good conduct in church is to be humble. Is to be humble. Um, 1 Peter 5 says, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, Likewise, younger, support yourselves unto, or submit yourselves unto the elder. Now, submit yourselves unto the elder. That's not an elder like an elder butler or elder Brooks or an elder Williams. This word elder is submit yourself to someone that's have a little bit more knowledge in scripture. Submit yourselves unto the elder, unto the person that's your elder in ministry. Yea, should be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. Our conduct should be one of humility. It goes on to say in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And I like that because if we're going to be humble, we can't try to make a name for ourselves in church. Let God lift us up. Because what we do in secret, God will reward us openly. So the conduct in worship ought to be thankful. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Number two, we ought to be unified in spirit. That means we have to pray up before we come to worship. We have to be unified in worship before we come to service. And then, of course, we have to be humble. We have to be submissive. Sometimes as humans, we don't want to take instruction from anyone. But all of us can learn from somebody else. So an elder here, we have to submit ourselves unto the elder, unto the person that has a little bit more knowledge and understanding of the scripture. We can't act like we know everything and we've just been saved for a week. And now we we walking around and we can tell everybody what you're doing, what the Bible says, and all of that's fine because zeal gets up in there, but we have to be humble. We have to be submissive. We have to learn. We have to study. We have to be humble to have good conduct in the church. That's number three. Because it also says, believe it or not, um, I think it's in 3 John chapter 1. 3 John chapter 1. There's a person that wanted to be in charge of everything. And he hindered God's work because he put himself before the work of God. And his name was Diotrephus. 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 That was his name. It's only mentioned once. But he was a brother that was not humble. He wanted everything his way. And he put a damper on the progress of scripture because he came to take charge 
and he wanted it his way. There's a biblical way to deal with people, but one person, this is key, one person does not run the church because it's God's church. Even as pastor, we are the sheep of his pastor. And it's not a dictatorship. It's listening from God, hearing from God, applying it to the leader or the pastor. And then the pastor gives out what God gave him or her, not interpreting it in my own private interpretation because by me doing that, I am not being humble. I'm exalting my theology. I'm the exalting my opinion. And that's not good conduct. Because if the preacher interprets it wrong, he's not being humble. He or she won't listen to God. Then the people become confused. And the people become scattered. That's why I always say, be thankful for your Bible. Be unified in Scripture. Because if the Bible says it, and we try to teach the Bible, the Holy Spirit will give us understanding. So even if the leader is not humble, or if the leader is arrogant, yeah, because we have personality, when we look at the Word of God, the Word of God will guide us and teach us, and God will deal with a leader that's not humble or a leader that's arrogant. Let God deal with that person. We don't have to fight that person because we didn't come to church to fight. We came to be thankful. We came to worship. We came to be humble. And then, number four, we have to be reverent. We have to ex respect the church. Now, I know it's just a building. And we can't worship the building. That's sort of idol worship. We can't worship the pulpit or the things in the church. We can't worship things. But the house is a symbol where we go to worship God. So we need to respect where we worship. We don't worship the things. But we need to have a level of conduct where we respect where we worship, where God comes and deals with us. So we have to be careful. We just can't be getting up, just walking around and doing what we want to do. That is a level of disrespect and not being reverent. Because God speaks to us. We got to stop slamming doors and cell phones and, and disrespect and not paying attention, no reverence. Because you may not like what's going on personally, but there's always something that's there for all of us. We can't get to the place where we feel we know it all. He or she's not talking to me, talking in the church. Some folks don't even bring a Bible. Getting up while the ministry, now we understand emergencies and you have to go to the laboratory. But we need to respect the word of God. So we have to reverence the place. We have to say this is where God's honor is. This is where we sacrifice. This is where we worship. We have to be reverent. It's talking about church conduct, stuff that we already know. We already know. Do you know if you come to church with an attitude of worship, do you know... You can lose your attitude of worship. You can get out of the spirit if somebody next to you is not connected and start gossiping. Look at that. Look at this. And do you know for a moment you will move out of your worship sphere and wind up listening to them? And then you miss because that person is not reverencing where God is or doesn't have respect for what you're trying to do in worship. I used to go to church and there were some people I just didn't want to sit beside. Because they, they just talk, they don't pay attention and find 
criticism with what's being said, who's saying it. And sometimes there's somebody's next to you that just don't have their focus on the purpose of why we're there, always finding fault with everything. You need to change your seat because they're going to block you from getting what you need to help you through the week. And they're not respecting or being reverent. They're not coming with a thankful heart. They're not coming with a place to be humble. They're coming with the attitude of, I'm here, let the show begin. That person, you need to move. And I tell all of us, when I go to visiting churches, and I sit down, and persons start talking about stuff that's not related to worship, or when the worship begins, they talking about everything but worship, change my seat. Because all they're going to do is distract me. And a word for all of us, when we come to worship, we need to come with a thankful heart. We need to come in the spirit of humility. We need to come in the spirit of thanksgiving. We need to come being reverent, reverencing the place. A place is not going to save us, but respect the place. Persons say all the time, um, Pastor Butler, you reverend. No, 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 no. I'm not reverend. The office that I occupy is holy. It's none reverend but God. So we're in the office of the reverence of God. I'm not reverend. Well, of course, we're reverend by title. We understand that. But be clear. We're not so special. God is the one that's reverenced. We are called reverend so-and-so because we're in the office of the most high reverend. Because I need the same God that you need. But we have to respect the office of the minister. Respect the office of the pastor. If you don't like the pastor or the deacon or whatever, maybe it's the wrong word. Maybe you're uncomfortable with the leader, but at least expect respect the office. Let me give you a real hardcore example, and I'll just say this past president, I'll be honest with you, there's a, there's a side of me, I don't agree with him at all. But when he was president, I had to respect the office of the presidency, not particularly him. That's just me. So you get the idea. You might be in a disagreement with a pastor, but he's still in the office. So we have to respect the office, deacon, leader, ministry person, auxiliary leader, at least respect the office. So getting back to this whole part, how we come to church and the person don't want to listen, don't want to have nothing to do, looking around, talking about next week, where they went last week, what they're going to do. They are a distraction. And sometimes you either tell them, can you please be quiet? I'm listening. Can you please be save that till we're done? In church, making plans and not paying attention to the song. Because our conduct is not toward God. But finally, there's one other. We have to be discerning in worship. We have to examine. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, if you make your notes. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. So we have to be so discerning that we have to be able to discern what's of God and what's not of God. So we need to be a mind of discernment. So in order to do that, we need the mind of Christ. What is God trying to do? What is he trying to tell me in service? What is he trying to do? How I should act? A level of discernment. What is in the message for me? What's in the song for me? How can I understand? 
How can I discern what's good for me? How can I discern how I can take what I need to be a better Christian? So our conduct in church or in worship, number one, we have to be discerning. We have to be reverent. We have to be humble. We have to be unified. And we have to be thankful. That gives us good conduct in worship. And when we come to worship God and focus on God, every need will be met. Because in worship, in true worship, just being thankful should just give you a good smile, give you a shout. Just being thankful in worship is something that should give you joy. Just being thankful. And then, and then just being discerning to get away from people that don't really worship the way you feel. Being unified, one with the Spirit. Being humble, being able to listen. When we come to church, we come to church to hear from God. And many people come to church and they say, I didn't get nothing out of church. I don't know what was going on. I didn't like this. I didn't like that. Well, you know, maybe it was you. Because when the Word of God goes out, there's something for everybody. Not everybody gets everything, and not everything is for everybody. But our conduct ought to be one of thanksgiving, one of humility, one of worship, one of discerning, one of humility. And when we come to our conduct should be, Lord, here I am. Feed me from on high. Help me where I'm weak. Build me up where I'm torn down. Help me to focus on your music. Help me to focus on your message. Help me to focus on what I need in this worship. Help me to tune out these people. Tune out the attitudes. Help me, God, to focus so when the word or the song or the message that I can get something from me. I want my worship to be pleasing to God, which means when we worship, we ought to thank God for what he has done. Let's modify our conduct to make sure that what we are doing, that God is pleased with our worship. Let's be thankful when we come to worship. Let's be unified in the spirit when we come to worship. Let's be reverent. Let's be humble. And let's be discerning of distractions in the name of Jesus. Father God, bless us tonight. Thank you for a lesson tonight on our conduct in worship. Help us to come into your house with thanksgiving. Give us an ear to hear. Blot out distractions. Help us to understand that we need to hear from you so that we can be better Christians. We thank you tonight. Be with us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Our prayer call starts at 730 right now. God bless you in Jesus' name.